Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Life Podcast, a member of the Nation Network of Podcasts and delivered by DoorDash. I'm, I'm guessing my math is going to be incorrect. So if you're listening to this, oh. Episode 317 of the Real Life Podcast. I'm Tyler Uremchuk. Bag Milk and Jay are here. Why are the others not? We'll get to that in just a minute. Of course, the podcast is brought to you by the HGA Group with their next generation of business services. They are built to serve you better. So when your business brings you challenges, you just dial up the HGA Group and they bring you some solutions. How about that? They literally do everything. Check out their website. We're tagging them in the socials all the time. Give them a follow on Twitter and Instagram. All that good stuff. HGA Group. Um, Jay, so just an update on, on, on the pod here, um, bag milk, me and you are ready to go because we do this podcast at the same time, every single week on the same days. Um, Jay (laughs) is wandering the streets of Victoria. Wanye is on dad duty and Chalmers just said, I'll come make my NFL picks, but I'm not doing the rest of the pod. Real life is getting in the way. Yep. That's about it. Isn't it? Chalmers real job. Chalmers so, with a real job, so he uh, has things to do, except betting always takes precedent. That's what we've learned mm-hmm. here today. He's, yeah, he's committed to a few things in life, and crushing Slurpees and betting on sports are two of them. My big thing, though, and I was actually talking with someone about the HGA group today, or at the HGA group about this today, our, our studio is going to be done like pretty quick here, like fully operational. New roadcasters in, new mics are in. We just got to figure out how it's all going to work in there. Um, when that happens, we can't really be doing this whole, like, I'll call in for five minutes or like, ah, you know, just, I'll do it from my truck. Like Chalmers does. Like when we're in the studio, people are going to have to like put in effort again, which is weird. Myself included. Well, you know what the beauty of this is, is the commute from my office to that studio is like 60 feet. So that's easy for me to commit to. So I will make sure that I am dedicated on time every time uh and you'll probably quote this and use this against me for when i miss an episode here probably shortly uh Mm -hmm. but the 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 geography is all going to make sense it's all going to be right under our noses like it's going to be hard not to do podcasts you guys are easily set up this is going to be yeah you guys are asking me to put pants on again for the first time in a year and a half and i'm (laughs) upset about it well we'll accept we'll accept sweatpants oh it's coming we'll we'll we'll, we'll ease you back to society Jared, we need nation sweatpants now, buddy. Yeah. We need them. That is oh a my must. God. How like we talk about sweatpants like 400 times a year. And for some reason, it's like sweatpants are so hard to do, yet they're so easily available all over the place. But you know what? We'll figure it out one day. We had a meeting there two weeks ago, and I was like, hey, sweatpants, sweatpants, sweatpants. He's like, I hear you. It's on the list. We're gonna make it happen. So this might be the year of sweatpants. But I want to circle back to our friends at HGA. Look at the range that they have. They're helping us. They're building our podcast studio for us. Mm -hmm. HGA group. That's pretty crazy. But anyways, sweatpants, continue. I just dream of a day when I get to live in my nation's sweatpants and they're covered in beer stains and, you know, mustard and whatever else. And they're my favorite garment of clothing. I just, I'm waiting for the day, yearning for it. Uh, Before we keep going with the podcast today, and we, we got some hockey stuff to talk about and all that good and all that good stuff. Um, there's something that is definitely more important than anything else we will talk about on the podcast. September 30th is the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation to honor the survivors of residential schools, honor both the survivors and victims of residential schools, their communities and families. I saw Oilers Nation made some great posts about that. If you want some more info, uh, make sure you go check it out. I, we had a whole Twitter thread that uh, that went out earlier today as well. I mean, the thing is, anywhere you go on, online, Twitter, Instagram, there's posts about this, which I think is just, it's just fantastic because I mean, it's one of those things where you don't want sort of the progress and the movement and the conversations to only be a one day thing. But at the same time, having this day, you know, seeing so many people out and about wearing orange shirts, um, it's good to know that there are people in society who want progress and, and want to help and want to be a part of a solution. And I think that's what this day is about is just highlighting that There are people who want to make a difference and who look back on parts of the history of this country, province, whatever, that were not okay. And we're very, very bad and people want to make a difference. And like, like I said, it's the national day for truth and reconciliation and uh, anywhere you go online, you're going to be able to find ways to kind of chip in and, and help out a little bit. So I urge the listeners of this podcast to do exactly that. 
I think for me, like looking around, like Tyler said, looking around Twitter and looking around social media, there's a lot of opportunity to, uh, if, if you're, if you're seeing this stuff and aren't sure really what's going on, there's a lot of opportunity to learn something today, to listen, to read some stories, to learn about it. And that's kind of what I see when I look around all the opportunities to do that. And it's, um, like you said, it's important. And uh, I was happy to see uh, Jay and I were in contact a little bit about it over the last few days that the nation was going to make a donation uh, to Bent Arrow today, which um, is an excellent organization here locally. And I think it's important that we all that we all keep the conversation going and that we all keep making sure that this is not just a one day thing, like Tyler said. Mm-hmm. Um, Bent Arrow, sorry, Bent Arrow is on Instagram at Bent Arrow Y-E-G. If you want to go uh, find out more about them and what they do there, they're also at Bent Arrow.ca, B-E-N-T, and then the word Arrow.ca. They have a nice post up right now saying they're taking September 30th to commemorate and honor those who are victim of residential schools and those who continue to be impacted by these traumas. And I think that last part is really important as well. I think everyone here can do can do a better job or continue doing a good job of uh of helping out in that regard um very well said you too um you know it's tough to kind of even add on to that you guys covered everything off about the importance and significance of this day has i'm in victoria right now and staying not too far and i apologize for the traffic i'm apparently now on the busiest street in victoria but uh i went to the capitol like the parliament building or sorry the legislative building there and on the steps thousands and thousands uh, of, of shoes. I shouldn't say thousands and thousands, but there was a lot of shoes there as kind of, you know, uh, I don't want to call it a monument, but just as a, as a sign, as a signal, as a memory of, of all the kids uh, that never came home from residential schools. And it was very powerful. Uh, myself, my girlfriend, that's, we purposely wanted to come through Victoria today to come and see that. And uh, yeah, it was a serious moment of reflection for ourselves. Uh, but yeah, like you guys said, this is a very important day. The conversation can't stop. This is something, this is part of our history. We can't, we can't look uh, and turn our backs to it. We have to, we have to acknowledge it and keep talking about it. And, you know, truth and reconciliation, like that's what this is all about. So I'm proud of you guys for all your actions and all the words that you've said. It makes me happy that I'm part of your team and everyone there keep talking about this because this is an important subject. Um, the last thing I want to say on this, like Jay, you, you mentioned all the little shoes and things like that. There's a bunch of those little, again, I don't want to call them monuments, but there's a bunch of those little areas in Edmonton and St. Albert. When I go for walks in the river Valley in St. Albert, there's a couple spots and like, there is nothing that hits me harder than seeing like those little shoes on the, on the steps or on the ground kind of thing. And it's just like, I've seen a couple of pictures of it today. And every time it just hits me, it's like, man, like kids, like little kids. Oh it, every time that hits me hard. It's real. Oh. It's real. Oh, and you're right. Like that's the thing you sit there and it's, you're just like overcome with emotion yeah. and thought and reflection. And uh, yeah, no, like it's like every time I, I mean, we've all seen, I'm sure by now, like hundreds of them as, as, as kind of the year has gone on here. Cause it's been a year filled with that. And every time it hits me, like it's the first time it's brutal. Um, Anyways, again, if you want to help out bent arrow yeg on Instagram, bent arrow.ca Oilers nation, um, very happy that Oilers nation made a donation and hopefully, uh, anyone who can help out does as well. And there's also a bunch of other great indigenous charities out there as well. And like, uh, like bag milk said, you, you just go on Twitter, you go on Instagram. It, every second post is about it right now, which is awesome as well. Cause it shows that a lot of people really do care and really do want to make September 30th, a day for truth and reconciliation. Um, not that it is easy to transition off that topic. Just one, just one thing, oh, last yeah, yeah, go, thing go. Tyler that I want to add, cause the nation did again, make a donation to bent arrow. Just I'm on their website right now. If you scroll down a little bit, there's an opportunity for you to donate and help them out with their cause, which is building upon the strengths of Aboriginal children, youth and families to enable them to grow spiritually, emotionally, physically, and mentally so that they can walk proudly in both the Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal communities. So if you're cruising the internet today, if you're able, uh, go over to bentarrow.ca. There's a little donation button there on the right-hand side of the screen. And if, if not, take the opportunity to read some of the stories that they've got available on the website as well, because it's all, it's all important stuff. Sorry to cut you off, Tyler. 
Nope. That was a, uh, I think that's a good spot to end it on. And we will now make the transition into a little bit of hockey talk because Chalmers is not here to tell us not to do hockey talk today. Um, the Oilers now three preseason games deep, right? Yes. That's yep. correct. Um, so we're, we're almost halfway, halfway through almost yeah, tomorrow's the halfway only the halfway mark, uh, but tomorrow's also October 1st. And I feel like things are really going to pick up after October one. Like at that point, we're 13, we're less than two weeks away from the start of the season. We complained about it quite a bit, Tyler on Oilers nation radio about the preseason being eight games, but at least if there is like a good part about the preseason being eight games, this first week, having five on week one, just kind of knocking them out like back to back Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, back to back Friday, Saturday. And what, as we go along, the interesting thing, I know we're going to jump backwards a little bit, but the interesting thing about last night was as the season or the preseason progresses, you see more and more NHL regulars in the lineups and seeing how the prospects kind of stack up against them. So that's what I was watching in a game like last night against the Winnipeg Jets, how a guy like Ilya Konovalov and net could stand up to the Blake Wheelers, the Mark Shifley's and all that kind of thing. So try to pick out stories to get through the preseason has been interesting a little bit because as we all know, these aren't for us. These are evaluation games and tune-up games for the players. So uh, happy to get this first week out of the way though. I got to tell you. Um, Matt Bangbell, it's been pretty fucking easy to get some amazing storylines. We got Brandon, the fucking red light goal scoring machine. Lamborghini Perlini. Second coming of Maurice Rock and Richard Perlini. Lighting it up at will. That's great. He really is. And the guy's got boots, man. He, he wheels. And he's big, big body. Granted, and also, not mean, but that's okay. There's a guy like Colton Sevier that's busting his ass too to try and earn that last spot. They're probably on the fourth line. So there, there are definitely interesting stories. It's just, it's, it's, it's hard to get for me personally to get fired up about the preseason when, you know, the games aren't on TV right now. The streams, at least for me, have sucked a little bit. There's just chunks where I'll lose five minutes of the period because it's buffering or refreshing or whatever, whatever. And that's fine. It's just I, I, I'm, I really want to get to the dance. I really want to see October 13th roll around. And, like, I just – that's what I want. Like, let's get through these great we're having conversations on the nation it's hilarious to see people arguing in the comment section about preseason games i love all that but man i can't wait to get going for real yeah me too and again i've said this a hundred times it feels like eight games is just way too much like the oilers have already cut down their roster to uh 15, eight more cuts today i saw yeah they're down to 15 d men and 22 forwards okay we're three games in you, you're going to tell me that if they, you only gave them three more games that they probably couldn't cut it down to their final roster, they easily could. Um, but I mean, it's going to be a slow grind here. Like vets aren't really going out on the road. They basically play the home games. And uh, speaking of the home games, I had a chance to be in attendance for the first Oilers game with fans in the stands since March of that would be March of 2019. Correct. Yeah. The last game against the jets. Um, it was interesting i uh, know it, it would have been march of 2020 march 2020 yeah. yeah yeah it was that last game against the jets mm-hmm. when uh what's his balls from the nba that's that yeah, yeah. Rudy Gobert. In yeah 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 um so going into the game because obviously you needed uh you needed your proof of vaccination and a piece of id and then your ticket on top of that um super quick it did not take me any more time than it did in the past to get through. Like I went in the doors that were the, uh, the, so what are you rocking? like walk us through. What do you want? Like you got your just yeah, your yeah. piece of paper and you got your thing on your phone. What do you got? I got my PDF on my phone. Um, I got my ID in my hand, like my driver's license and tickets are all on the phone now too. Right? So you have your PDF open your thing and I want the LRT side. So you walk in and there was a bit of a line to get to, where they were checking the vaccinations, which was like a little bit further up from where the tickets were. So like that line took a little, but it wasn't any more than like the normal ticket line. And then once you got through there, cause everyone was kind of bottlenecked at that spot. And again, it took like two seconds. You just showed your card. They quickly looked name doses, ID good. Like that quick you were through. And because everything was bottlenecked up at the top, by the time you got through there, there was no line to like scan your ticket and go through the metal detectors. Also, they're doing no bags now or they have different bag restrictions. So that may have gotten it to go quicker. Not that I really agree with the bag decision. I think it's kind of weird, but um, it was super quick to get in. Simple as that. Um, you get in and for the most part at the beginning, everyone was wearing masks. The one thing I will say is once you got... <laughs> 
you know, first intermission, especially. And once you were kind of around the concession areas, it was like, oh man, no one is wearing masks because everyone's having a beer or a pop or eating. And there wasn't really any sort of enforcement, which that's what I was going to ask you about because I was watching the stream and, you know, because it's not on TV, it's just on the stream. There's a lot of crowd shots happening as opposed to like going to commercials for whatever. So there was doing a lot of crowd shot and just sweeping the crowd. And again, everybody's got a drink or a beer or some popcorn or whatever in their hand. And it's just like, oh, it's mask optional night at Roger's place tonight. Yeah. And like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if everyone there is a negative test and everyone is double vax, then like maybe I shouldn't have a massive beef with it. But I also just look at the state of COVID in this province right now. And I'm kind of like, you know, maybe like maybe we could flash up a couple more messages on the scoreboard being like, hey, everyone, wear your masks. Like I was I was pull it down, take a sip of my beer, put the mask back on again. I, I'm not an epidemiologist, I believe is what they're called. So I don't know if like me doing that is like just as bad as someone who just sits there with their mask off for the whole game. I have no idea, but it was a little bit weird being back in that building that was 80% full. So, I mean, you're in a building with probably, you know, what 12, you it was about 14,000 or something, wasn't it? Yeah. So 12 to 14,000 people in that building, like you're shoulder to shoulder with strangers again. It was odd being back in the rink. Like I just, I kind of, you weren't up in the press box. You were in the seats. No, I went, I sat, I was a fan. I sat in the seats. So, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm very rarely going to say this. So this is an off-brand statement, but <laughs> give the Oilers organization the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I am going to only assume safely with high confidence they're learning this out too, because this is all yeah. new for everyone, right? Like this is this oh, is wild. They probably didn't know they probably didn't know if they're going in there. They probably don't know how to staff staff it properly. Like they need to learn. I yeah. bet you they'll be introducing new policies as they figure this out. I understand, you know, your take about and your experience of it being weird. Now let's remove all that. I got a real important question. How did an Oilers beer taste, man? How was it? It's been, it's been, a I've minute. got follow-ups. So walk, walk me through this. Okay. First off. Yeah. I didn't want it to come off. Like I was like ripping the Oilers organization. I actually think the process was good getting into the game. I thought everything for the most part was fine. It like, was just, it was just an weird unknown. Yeah, it's unknown. And it was weird in the sense of like, holy shit, I'm in a room with so many other people. The Oilers beer, I made sure I got a draft Molson Canadian to really price, get the first, full experience first, of price, it. Price, 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 price. What's the price? Um, so I went to the game. I was I was there with my dad. So I got a beer. He got a gin. And I think it was $20, like just over 20 bucks, like 20, 50 or something. So I was I was wondering, like, I was trying to find out on Twitter. I, was doing I don't think it went up. I think that's what I always paid. Well, I saw Mimamoto tweet like two pieces of pizza and a beer or something was 48 bucks. Well, I, I just assumed like he had to be, I thought he was exaggerating, like some hyperbole. Oh, okay. This, yeah, like, but I don't know. I, I, I respect some good hyperbole. Um, but I mean, okay, two beers, 12 bucks a pop. So that's 24. And so then like there's 10 no way bucks each for a slice of pizza. That seems a little high, but actually I, it might not be that insane. But actually, no, if he said pops, not beer, there's no way that was $44, Mimamoto. Yeah. That would have been like 30. That's what I was thinking. I was like, it's got to be a little bit of hyperbole there because I too am a big hyperbole guy. So I was curious. Yeah. But back to Jay's question, how was it just being back in the bar and having a beer? Like that's a very normal yet seemingly abnormal thing to do here in 2021. Yeah, it, yes. like, it felt cool. Like it was weird. It was cool. I felt uneasy because I'm like, like I was at a Jays game a couple of weeks ago and that one there, like, because being at a Jays game is so abnormal for me anyways, I didn't really clue into the fact like, Oh my God, there's so many people around, but being back at Rogers place where it felt so familiar, but at the same time felt so weird. I just like, I can't even really put my finger on like how it felt. It was just like, okay, we're, we're back. Like it was odd. I don't know. It was weird. I, I've got some pent up energy. Like I'm a retired two beer, a period guy. But that guy might come out of retirement for his first game back in Rogers watching the Oilers in regular season, especially on the home. I feel like that guy deserves to come out. It's been a while. And uh, I just I just can't wait because I just I just I think I think it's gonna I think I think there's gonna be some emotions there. I think there's gonna be some feelings. 
I, I'm 100% with you. The last time I got a little bit banged up at an Oilers game, I went with uh, Rick and I posted a picture as the throwback Thursday for on, on Instagram a little while ago. And I kind of forgot how hard he and I went in the third period. And it just, I was like, man, it's been so long since we've been able to do that. I miss it. It's almost like a, it's almost like the return of the gallery days. It was life changing for me when I went from two beers a period to one in terms of how my night went how I felt the next day. <laughs> I can't it is amazing that. what that does. What I, that I've is. always been a, and I mean, people listening to this podcast, but like, of course your M trucks a one beer, a period guy, but like I am, if I have six beers while I'm sitting there, like six draft beers, I'm fucking on the floor by the last five minutes of the third period. I'm one beer, a period go hard after the game. Well, well, you yeah. learned that at a young age. Like I decided to, you know, take many years of not learning that mistake. Uh, and go out of thinking that this game is going to be different. I'm going to be better. Old soul, though, you know? He's always been an old Yeah, that's soul. true. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, pro- he probably has also in the third period, a uh, nice hot decaf coffee to warm up. Oh, delicious. Yeah. That actually sounds nice. Um, anyways, I will say, Jay, you mentioned it. pent up aggression or like <laughs> pent up energy. The crowd yeah, oh, was energy. Yeah, sorry. The crowd was unreal. Like they were. Ask- McDavid got a super loud ovation when they announced the starting lineup, when they were scoring goals, it was like loud, loud, like wasn't preseason loud. That was regular season, big game loud. Not even just like a Tuesday night, regular season game. That was Saturday night against the flames. Kind of loud. It was unreal. Like major props to everyone who was in attendance. Cause you could tell 90% of the crowd that was there. I did see a few people in Kraken gear, which I thought was odd. Um, but 90% of the people that were there, you could tell were like ready to go and ready to cheer on the team, which was really cool. I, now here's the thing. I was watching that game as I do. I know it's the preseason. I know we're not supposed to get too excited about what happens in the preseason one way or the other, but Tyler, how can we not get excited about the line of Hyman McDavid Pooley RV? Cause they looked incredible against the Kraken. It's nice that we're doing this because our last podcast was the anti Kool Aid podcast. But well, John man. Scott chose violence that day. Yeah, that's what he John, did. John Scott, God love him. He is taking a righteous sack beating on oh, Oilers throwback. Nation Twitter, and I love it. He yeah, he's going to be the heel. He came at us, and now everyone's firing back at him just like we should. And I'm here for it. He's being tagged on mass and it's cracking me up. Like, and also I got to give some love to the nation meme team. They have been putting in the work for last, the last episode with John Scott, because the memes coming out and they're tagging him with that. It's just been hilarious. Um, anyways, Hyman Hyman's a fit. Like the way he forechecks, man, Oilers crowd fans are favored love by this guy. Crowd favored by Halloween. It's without, oh, a yeah. quite, without doubt. Um, yeah, he's just, he looks like a perfect fit. I was talking, uh, I was talking about this the other day and this is something like low tide. And I would always talk about like the Oilers needed to find a Patrick Maroon who could skate better and shoot better. And I think Zach Hyman is just a better skating, better shooting, more skilled Patrick Maroon. Like he loves going to the net. There was even some points where like, I was just noticing I'll use route for a back of a letter, lack of a better term, but the way he could like cut right behind a defender and like sandwich himself between a defender and the goalie to like create traffic in front. I was super impressed with how he played super impressed. The, and Pooley RV was a speed demon. The thing I liked about Hyman first impressions, of course, is this is nothing new if you're a Leafs fan, but the puck pursuit and the forecheck that that guy has on a shift by shift basis is going to help so much. Like I can just see now already how many points that guy is going to get just by flying into the zone and digging out point or digging out pucks from McDavid. I can, you can oh. just see it. Oh, he's so hungry. I love it. Exactly. Hyman is exactly what we need. It is a better skating, not as willing to fight, but tenacious. Papper. Yeah. I don't want Zach Hyman fighting either. I want him on the ice for the entire game, scoring a bunch of sick goals, but also the Oilers power play. Like granted, Let's remember this was basically the Kraken's American League team. Riley was a, Shan was the first line center. There was a bunch of names on there that I was looking at my little <laughs> roster sheet and turning to my dad being like, I don't even know who that guy is. Like my dad be like, where did he play before? And I was like, I he could have played anywhere. I have no clue who that person is. Um, 
But when the Oilers got a power play, first off, this was a group with McDavid, Nuge, Dreisaitl, and you can throw Barry in there that was producing at a clip that was one of the most productive power plays the NHL seen in like 40 years, right? When the oil two years ago, that was the Oilers last year. They were great. Now you're swapping Alex chase on for Zach Hyman or pulley RV or pulley RV, whichever one it's unfair for the other team, man. If the Oilers get they, I think their power play is the chance to go above 40% this year. I honestly think they are that 40%. Good. That's insane. 40%. That I, lo- is I love the positivity. Prediction. I love that giant golf with delicious Kool-Aid, but oh, wow, man. Down. Yeah, that's going down real smooth over. What the were they last workshop. year? Last year they were 27.6. And this year they were or sorry, the year before they were 29.5. Okay, not above 40. I'll say a <laughs> 40 say, lofty. Oh, you think? I'll, I'll knock lofty, it down. Man. I'll, I'll say just like, under 40. I, I, I think they could be high 30s. Half, but geez. I think they're so I, good. I could see 30s. Well, remember, like they're playing against NHL goalies, NHL penalty killers. Like that's a high. But hey, hey, I'm here for it. If you're staying in the 30s, I'll say in the 30s. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I'll say in the 30s. That that'll be my hot take. Um, definitely a little too great. But their power play was sick the other day. Like when they got those five on threes against the Kraken, it was literally just. And Tippett kept his top unit out there. They played like a minute and a half of the five on four, and they got a five on three. I'm like, okay, surely they're gonna like give someone else some reps here. And it's like, nope. The big guns stayed out for the whole thing until they scored on the five on three. It was just hilarious to watch them like cycle the puck and the way Seattle was looked like they were playing with their sticks upside down. It's hilarious. And it's just, the thing is that group, you know, Hyman's new to the mix. Pooley RV is going to get more chances, but like that group for the most part, throw in Darnell nurse in there just cause he's going to get some reps as well as they've been together now for years working on the exact same thing. Yeah. So they've got it. It's almost like watching their muscle memory kind of pull them through. in that first one, they're like, Oh, this is what we do. I was waiting for like a, a patented Connor to Leon in his office near the goal line goal. That was the only thing that was kind of missing. Um, the other thing too, and we've talked about this before with the Oilers power play is I think the Oilers coaching staff does a great job of like not over coaching them. Like a lot of the shit they do and the magic they create and the chances they create is just like, McDavid and Dreisaitl and, and Barry Nuge. It's just them with their natural skill, just going out there and almost trusting their instincts. And I think that's good. What's going to make it even more difficult for the other team to shut down is you can sit there and you can watch the tape from the last couple of years and be like, okay, this is what they like to do. You know, they, they used to do the dry settle one timer on the side. And now dry settle sometimes is on the other side of the ice, or sometimes he's kind of that high guy in the slot. Now Hyman totally changes it. And they don't just have like a system that works. They just have a bunch of players who are so damn good on the power play. You can't stop them. They're just naturally too talented. Even when they had that five on three, they had it in the back of the net. The pulley RV goal took like three seconds of McDavid to Nuge to pulley RV. And there's just like, okay, I guess that's yeah. what we're doing. It's done now. Yeah, the way they were ripping that Hyman power crazy. play goal, like the passing was just like everyone's yeah. on another planet right now, and I want to go there so bad. Two beer Jay wants to go there so bad. <laughs> Two beer Jay is going to come out a few times. I think that's two beer and a onesie oh. Jay. I think. Oh yeah, I, 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 I might bring my road game to a couple home games. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, <laughs> You know, we're not, uh, we decided not to do the Vegas trip for obvious reasons here in November. And I might just make, uh, I might just make Edmonton my own Vegas here for a couple of the nights. You know what we should do? We should do like a nation Vegas trip in Edmonton. Like we should get a bus to take we, us we like, just from end a up cas- at like the river Cree. Yeah. That'd be yeah, fun. Like pregame, pregame at some bar, like pregame at the pint, get loaded, go to the game and then get a bus to take us to like whatever casino and do like a mini nation vacation. Man, cause I got to tell you, like after the golf tournament, when all of us ended up at the river Cree playing craps again, it just, it felt like home almost. It did. Oh, did it ever feel good, man? That took me back. I hadn't been at a casino in ages. It just, I, I just, it, it felt nostalgic and it was such a good night. So yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. Your room shock. So let's kind of see what happens here in the next little bit. Yeah. And if we think, you know, we're in a safe place. And obviously, you know, we would do it with everyone being vaccinated and whatnot. Um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We gotta, we gotta get, we gotta get the game back together, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at when the Oilers play Vegas on home ice. 
Um, but it looks like that doesn't happen until like the new year. Yeah. It's like January 14th is when Vegas rolls around, but that is a Friday night. So it would be a decent night to do it. That's a And you know what? In the, in the middle of January tundra season, that would be a great time for a little get together. Plus a bus to the casino. Yeah. We should have a theme. Should We should be, we should dress up. People need to know we're doing this. They got to yeah. see what they're, what's happening. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Before so we keep going. I, I, I'm going to share this story and I don't know if okay. I'm allowed to, but right, our, right boy Larvin, our boy, Larvin, our boy, Oh no, no, no. <laughs> our boy Larvin <laughs> is, um, is quite the character. He brings the fins and when he brings the fins, they bring the energy and they can fill the whole building with energy. Now I believe it's caught in some very upper echelon attention. Because one of, uh, I don't know if you know this, when I was in Helsinki, I went for lunch with my dear friend, S. Tiekman, uh, <laughs> and, uh, him and uh him and Larvin are very tight. And Essa was passing some information on that he heard from, we'll say, Edmonton Oilers Brass, that uh, they are aware of his presence in the building and would love to have him come back. Well, I don't know why they wouldn't like, well, I know, but I think that's great. It is great because if you don't know Larvinen and you don't know about when the Finns show up, that in itself is an experience to behold. There's a group of them sitting in a section at Rogers place and they are so loud that it comes through on the TV. Oh, it's the best. So uh, I sent Larvinen some dates. I I don't know what the world's going to look like, but maybe in March, maybe the Finns will come. Who knows? Before we oh, keep going on, desire. here, figure it out. Need to give some love to our friends at DoorDash where the promo code Real Life DD gets new customers 25% off and no delivery fee on their first order. But also, if you're not a new customer of DoorDash, we have another exciting promo to tell you about. And it's a partnership with Oodle Noodle. I used Hello. this yesterday, Tyler. And did it work well? I did. I used Oodle Noodle 2021 and I got $7 off my order. That was $30 or more because what your boy Bag Milk did is I've got a couple of boxes. I got a wonton soup. I got some spring rolls and I got some green onion cakes. It was a man sized order mm-hmm. and I was happy to have the promo code. Here's the play. This is the play. You go on Oodle Noodle on DoorDash, you pick out like two really good meals. Like you said, get the green onion cakes, get a soup in there. Who cares? You're going to get it right around that $30 mark. I'll spend more if you want, but if you get it right around the 30, seven bucks off, 23 bucks, man, you're getting like four meals for that price. And it's good shit. It's oodle noodle. It's, it's a crazy good deal. We, uh, so oodle noodle is part of, you know, our partnership with others nation, everything. We just have a kind of big holistic conversation. Um, and they view oodle noodle as an opportunity to kind of help grow their delivery network in the city. So we worked out this deal. So this is them investing heavily in us. Um, and this is also them investing heavily in you offering a crazy deal like this. So I was super happy that, uh, you know, they, they, they looked at noodle noodle and saw the opportunity with it. And um, yeah, it's a crazy deal. Like I, 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 I'm pretty sure. And bag milk or, or your M check, you've got the terms and conditions. I think you can redeem that like 10 times between yeah. now and the end of the year. Yep. It, it runs like until December 31st. And yeah, you can do it 10 times as long as your minimum order is 30 bucks each time. Yeah. So I'm going to it, knock it, these it's, out. It's worth it. <laughs> yeah, why not? Like that's set. You save 70 bucks. I that's two, that's two free orders. Like I said, my order last night was probably a little outrageous, but you know what? Sometimes you got to, it had been a minute. It had been a minute since I had a hot box with shrimp. It's delicious. Well, thank you, Ben. There you go. And thank hey. you, DoorDash. Ding dong. Ding dong. When's uh, the Kingsway store open, Jay? Oh, I'm sorry. You know, we make all these great promos thinking we're going to be opening right away. So we were, we were literally days from opening. And we were just finalizing a bit of the HVAC uh, construction. Not necess- We took over a space that had the HVAC that we needed. But... Uh, we were just kind of going through and getting ready for inspection. And then we kind of did some research on our own. We're like, "Uh Oh, something's wrong here. Uh, and it was something from the previous business that was in there. So we uncovered that and we're like, "Uh Oh, this is going to slow us down. So we had to get the landlord involved and the landlord at Kingsway was fantastic. They're like, Oh no, we need to fix this for you. So, you know, didn't, didn't put us out, but 
Um, it's taking a little bit of time. So uh, they're done the work. We're now just waiting for our inspections to come in again, uh, just to make sure everything is cool and we'll be opening very soon. And I mean, at this time, this is like the 30th time that I've said this. <laughs> Same thing with Fort Saskatchewan. I've been talking about it opening for like a year, but we've got our franchisees lined up for Fort Saskatchewan. We've got our real estate lined up and construction is starting, I believe, sometime this month or beginning of November, which means it'll be, you know, like a February ish opening out in Fort Saskatchewan and your M Chuck. We are opening an Aaron Ridge very soon in St. Albert, right next to our friends love pizza out near the Costco. So St. Albert, we are coming for you too. That store is about halfway done construction. So give that uh, five to six weeks and our franchisee Jignesh will be happily open and greeting you and serving hot boxes with shrimp or whatever else you like oh, um, out of that location. I, if there are any real life listeners in that area of St. Albert, cause that's where I'm around, we can do a lunch date. We can do a real life lunch date at the new, <laughs> new location when it's open. <laughs> we'll do a live recording of, uh, bring, bring our traveling roadcaster. Cause now we have yeah. two roadcasters. Yeah. That's, that's a big deal. We have two roadcasters, one for the road and one for the studio. Bingo. All right. Um, Chalmers who wouldn't is want here. A, more importantly, who would want a date with your M Chuck, right? Right. Exactly. I'm a great guy to take on a date. Of course. I bet you would be, buddy. <laughs> Chalmers hey, is here. What's up, Charles? Not much. How are you guys? Great. Yeah, if you just said five to six weeks for construction on that. If I know anything about construction right now, which I do, that's going to turn into <laughs> eight to nine weeks real fast. Well, hey, to be fair, we're we're being told it's three to four weeks, so I added a two week buffer there. <laughs> Boy, see, you're getting, <laughs> you built enough of these to know better. Yeah, your M Chuck math. It's the only world where your M Chuck math probably applies, and that's in construction. It's like what my friends do with tea times for me, they always add like twenty minutes because they know I'm going to come in about five minutes to tea time. Hot. But they always tell me like twenty minutes earlier so that I show up and I got a nice little buffer there. Smart. <laughs> all right so Charles what the heck's going on boys uh, what the heck's going on how about this last couple of Oilers games you're Chuck why are you already burning your brow at me no I wasn't um I've watched oh, okay. one of them it was the game I went to I didn't watch the game last night I was watching the Blue Jays um but the game I went to they beat the wheels off the Kraken AHL roster so it was sick Tyler that Jays yeah. game was stressful buddy holy fuck man I was pulling my hair uh, out I watched that Jays game last night too after I played a lot of quick nine holes and Man, that was fun. I, I remembered quickly why I like playoff baseball so much. You know, they get a guy on second, you know, uh, runner, on, like tying runs on second, nine out or in ninth inning. And you're just like sweating, right? It's coming right down to it. What is there? Five games left? Four games left. They got one against the Yanks four. tonight and three against the O's. So you've got to win all got to win today. The, um, I don't know if you know this Chalmers. I've been a massive baseball guy over the last six to eight weeks. I haven't missed many Jays games and it's been fun to just kind of follow this run along, but endlessly stressful last night when the Yankees tied the game up, I was just like, Oh fuck this. It's cursed. We're cursed. I don't, I don't know what it is about the two sports like playoff hockey. When I'm watching an Oilers playoff game and it's a stressful moment, I like almost bury myself in the couch. Like I, I have the hood up. Usually I got like, the, the front of the hoodie over the kind of the mouth area. And I just sit like there and I watch movie. and I'm stressed. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. a horror movie when I'm yeah. watching stressful baseball, like I was last night, I can't sit down. I'm like, pacing. Feet, yep. I'm like pacing around my house. Like legitimately when Jordan Romano was pitching to that last batter, I was just kind of standing up and like lurking around the living room. Like I can't sit still. Let's it's crazy. talk. Let's talk about Romano for a second. And the look on this guy, Oh my God. He looks like a throwback 1970s ball player with the curly hair coming out the back and side, big old mutton chops. And then this little mustache on him, but he is a throwback. I love he, this guy. He just one good Canadian boy. So you love to see it. And he just chucks fucking gas, man. Like he's going triple digits. Even when it's low in the zone, he's tossing triple digits down there. Sick. It's sick. I'm a big Boba yeah, Shed guy. Clutch oh, last night. How can you be? Man, he's hit. So when I was there, he hit a home run right to that spot. Like he just dropped it in right center field. And then last night he hit both those to like the identical spot. It's yeah. crazy, man. How he, he's a, he's a little guy. Like he doesn't look jacked. He's not like super tall. How he generates the power to push inside pitches to the opposite field. One of the Jays guys I follow 
Um, Chris Black is his name, I think. Um, he's out in Toronto. He tweeted out that on a pitch 94 miles an hour plus on the inside corner of the plate, there have only been three times where a player has taken a pitch in that spot at that speed and hitting it to the opposite field for a home run three times in baseball where that has happened. That is crazy. Or in, in the stat cast era. That's wild. That is wild. Yeah. Um, anyways, well, Blue Jays are Blue Jays are favored tonight. You think you might want to do a little Blue Jay Bengals parlay? I'm definitely on the Jays. Um, Got to be on the Love Jays. The Bengals. You like the Bengals tonight? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah. You think Joe they cover Burrow for life, man? Uh, covering is tough. Yeah, that's a seven and a half line. Seven I don't and know a half that. is tough. Yeah. I, I I don't know. Jack, Jacksonville, I can't. I have to respect when you have, hair. When, when but, you have two uh, bad teams and the and and one of them is favored by more than seven, you usually go with the the worst team and the spread. So and like if you just want to at least the sports book I'm looking at, if you want to just bet the Bengals on the money line, it's they're minus three twenty three. So oof. How about you go teaser route and you go Jags plus 13 and a half and then under 52 and a half. That seems like a good spot. Anyway. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My well, bad. Uh, Want to do our picks? Want to do our picks? We will. Once we talk about our new exciting partnership with our new betting partner points bet Jay, this has been a long time coming, but we were finally able to officially announce it. All right. Good chat, Jay. Um, yeah. Our new partnership. No, with- I got some real life stuff happening here. One second, guys. I know I love. While we're waiting for Jay, I'm going to talk about points bet for a second. If you're listening to this and you have a Twitter account, go to follow them at points bet Canada. We were told as a challenge with their teeny tiny little Twitter account that if we got it up to a thousand followers that they would donate a thousand dollars to the chair or a thousand followers, they would donate a thousand dollars to the charity of our choice. So as we're recording this, it's one 30 on a Thursday afternoon, they're at three twenty-seven, which is much better than the six they started with or something obnoxious like that. So let's get them up to a thousand. That's points bet Canada. We want them to donate to charity. So help us out. If you got a Twitter account well, points bet Canada, they are now at three twenty-eight. There you go, Chalmers. That's a spirit, man. buddy. Good man. Anyways, we got an exclusive partnership with Points Bet. They're going to be our official sports book going forward here, not just at Oilers Nation or on Real Life, um, at the entire Nation Network and all of Daily Face Off as well. Um, super exciting stuff. Their website is super crisp as well. So check them out at pointsbet.com. And uh, that's where we'll be going to uh, get all of our odds here for the foreseeable or for the, for the rest of this podcast. Remember, we're talking hot or hockey, football, whatever. I'm I'm, I'm just pulling up their NFL odds here for the week. Sounds good. I've got the uh, I've been really bad on my player props for the night for tonight's like for the Thursday night game. I've been horrible in general. But I think tonight I've got a lock. All right, tonight you have a lock, like Thursday night or lock. I think I'm excited. Well, because because what we do is we pick a player, we pick a player prop for tonight's game, and then we pick a spread, right for the, from week, the weekend. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a player prop, not just any prop. Ah, oh, you can do any prop. Oh, well, I, you know what? I've been doing just player props. I like the player props. That's what you know. I feel like you can find one of those in the in, in there that I that you kind of like. So, yeah, if I'm going to go first, if I can start, yeah, give her rookie wide receiver Jamar Chase over hmm. sixty-eight and a half yards is what I see. What is points bet at it? Have it at. Uh, Jamar Chase on points bet is 69.5. Okay, I would still go over 69 and a half receiving yards. Jamar Chase, that guy is unbelievable. And I think that him and Joe Burrow are going to do special things tonight because I think the Bengals are going to take this thing going away. Um, still not going to take the spread, but I am taking Cincinnati to win this game. I'm going to go if we're just doing our, our props for tonight. I've got the over, over 23 points in the first half. That's why I'm going to go. I want to, I want to watch a little bit of offense tonight. That's what I'd why like not? to see. So over 23 in the first half. That's my prop. First half. Well done. Yeah, over 23. You got to like that. Over 23 in the first half for bag milk. Uh, I'll go next here because I don't think Jay's ready yet. Um, I'm going to take James Robinson over three and a half receptions. I like taking the pass catching back 
to go over in his receptions. And with James Robinson, I mean, this one is set at, you know, an even money over under three and a half. It, it, it looks pretty safe, especially when you consider going back to last week, James Robinson racked up. What was it? Six, uh, six targets. And he caught all six. And in the past two weeks before that, he caught three balls in each, even though he didn't play very well. So I think they'll target Robinson a few times and over three and a half seems like a good spot to go. Keep in mind, I have not nailed a single one of my player props and neither has Chalmers. <laughs> no, we have not. Uh, Bag milk, you're one and one, but the one you hit was Gronk to score a TD at plus 240. So you're up money. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just not, I just don't feel very good about my bets so far as we've been doing this, you know? I uh, don't tell you all about it. Jay, you here? One second. How am I doing here, Chuck? Yeah, how am I doing? You're, uh, you have not missed a pick yet. <laughs> you haven't missed a pick yet. Oh, really? Oh, interesting. Oh, Three and oh, oh, thank you for sharing. Oh, four and oh, thank you very much. Oh, four and oh, uh, well, week four, so I'm not sure how that's the game. No, no, because we didn't do week two, but Jay has nailed both his spreads and both his player props. Oh, uh, okay. I see what you're doing. Initial or sign? What? Signing documents as we do this. I think he's getting a rental car. Yeah, I'm getting a what kind of car you got? Oh. A rental car. Nice, a nice well, van, maybe. Uh, I, odd, I I decided to to join the podcast while I walk to the uh, to the car rental place, and it turns out that there is two national rental cars. You'll pull it up, okay? There's two national rental cars on the exact same street, and the one that I needed to go to was directly behind my hotel, but I went on the 30 minute walk to this one, but the guy was nice enough to accommodate me and still get me in a car, so. I was supposed to get a little SUV, but now I've got a Chevrolet Cruze. Well, and you got your steps in, most importantly. Oh, crushed my steps. That's why I was excited. It was 2.2 Ks away, but uh, all good. Um, okay, so for tonight's bet, I am. I, I need your guys' help because I don't have access to any information. Yep. Give me the give me the prop bet on uh, uh, Jamar Chase and the Burrow prop. Give me the information because I'm going to pick one of those so- two guys. Burrow is his, his passing yards is set at two fifty one and a half. and um, his over. passing. Okay. You're just Kate. You're taking the over. Okay. Over two fifty one yeah. on Burrow. Yep. Easy. Yep. Yeah. And then I'm just going and, money line, money line, uh, uh, Bengals? on the Bengals and brilliant minds JR, because I took Jamar chase as my, my bet of the night, uh, at over 69 and a half receiving yards. Well, I hope both you guys hit your bet because then that'll contribute to me hitting my bet. So this is just a team yeah. affair going on here. You're just parlaying it all up, bag milk. Yeah, that's right. I don't mind that. I don't mind doing a little a little real life parlay on all this. Oh, a little um, bet builder. Little bet builder action, yes, sir. All right, uh, let's get to our spread picks for the week here. Does someone have one they want to get right off their chest early, or do you want me to go first? I got two, I'm so a I, can, I can wait. I'm a disaster, so I'm going to try. I'm going to go ten, Tennessee to cover over the Jets because the Jets are terrible. I need a win here. I need a confidence yeah. boost. That was one of my two, actually. I love that bet. So I, I kind of figured out why I maybe don't do so good on this. Um, maybe it's because I like to take chances and I like to go for the gusto. I believe that the Carolina Panthers at 3-0 and are fake news, and I think that the Dallas Cowboys are just catching their stride with both their backs and cd lamb and Dal dalton schultz coming on hot so i'm going to be going the cowboys minus four and a half against the fake news panthers oh, even though oh, i love oh, Chub- oh. even though i love chuba hubbard i'd love to see him do great i just don't think it's going to be good enough fake right. news panthers wow yeah. I, I i like it um who is oh man <laughs> I, I, once again, I'm flying blind again. I, I looked this morning in pre- preparation, but uh, I'll, you know I'll, what? I'll give you a game, and you tell me if give, you like it. The Patriots, okay. the Patriots. Tom Brady going back home to Foxborough to play the Patriots. The Bucks are favored by seven. Now, this is a classic case of oh yeah, oh Bill, yeah. They'll Bill cover. Belichick They'll knows cover. what Tom Brady's going to do, but Tom Brady knows that Bill Belichick knows what Tom Brady's going to do. So it's like when you watch that Marty Fish versus Andy Roddick. I knew what he was going to do, but I couldn't stop it. So can Bill stop it or does Tom Brady run wild on him? So what are you taking, Jay? Yeah, I think uh, I, I'll, I'll take I'll take the Bucks to cover. I think I think it, this is a statement game, right? This is to prove who is the real mad genius behind the pads. Was it Belichick or was it Brady? 
Brady goes out and wins his uh, first season away from the Pats to kind of really set the tone for that. And I think coming back to Foxborough is going to be something he is extra motivated for. All right. So bag milks on Tennessee minus seven Chalmers is on Dallas minus four and a half Tampa minus seven is Jay's pick. And for mine, I'm taking the Chicago bears to go ahead and cover a measly two and a half point spread or sorry. It's, is it two and a half or three on points bad as I'm pulling up right I think now? It's two and a half. Yeah. I think Against it's two and a half. Lions. Yeah. Who are they playing again? The lions. Oh man. Oh, no way. I'm taking lions to win that game. No way, man. Fuck the Lions. But, uh, Chicago's in a <laughs> Chicago's in tough right now. They are not oh, looking they good. They are just the defense. Other, the other one has Beg Milk made a pick yet? Yeah, he took Tennessee. Oh, yeah. uh, Tennessee so was other, one of my two. The, the other one that I was looking at, and this is always going to be the case where this one's probably going to hit, but those Pittsburgh Steelers are <laughs> not looking good right now. Ben Roethlisberger looks like a shell of his old self, and they are, um, I think, six and a half point dogs to the green Bay Packers. And um, I think that one's going to be a good one too. Take the Packers. If you were to take our four picks and uh, parlay them together for a little real life parlay, it would actually be plus plus 1,354. So like a $10 big boy, a $10 bet on that pays out 135 bucks. If you parlay just our selections tonight for the game, I think it works out to, I punched in the numbers pretty roughly, but it's like, uh, if you can parlay them, it'll be a bit more, but on the bet builder, it's like plus three thirty three or something like that. Um, which oh, I is like that thousand. I like that plus 1000 there for us to go four and oh, even though the best we've done this year is two and two. Yep. I don't know. First of all, be advised, but it's like, put a couple bucks down. Who cares? You know, yeah, let's, fair. uh, have some fun. All right, there you go. There's our real life pick'em for the week. Brought to you by Points Bet, our new betting partner at the Nation Network. Again, a- Points Bet Canada. We want to get that donation for a thousand bucks. So go follow oh Points Bet Canada on Twitter if you have a Twitter account, please. Let's talk about their social media and how hilariously small it's so it is. bad. Um, it's it is quite comical. They actually find it very cute and funny as well. And they have told us, I'm sure Big Melf has said to make fun of them for it because it is worthy of needing to make fun of. So just like Bag Milk said, let's help them get to a thousand followers. What we'll do is we'll just top that up with our donation to Pentero that we made uh, and, you know, continue supporting a fantastic cause. But points bet, we are very, that was a big announcement. I put it on LinkedIn and they put it on LinkedIn and like, I got like, it, it, it's crazy. The people that are liking and talking about it and like the, 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 the places that picked up on the story and reported on it, like yeah. this is actually a pretty big deal. I didn't, re- I didn't realize it, but it is actually a very, oh, very big this, deal for this, us. This and is for a big points deal. Bet. They have two, 328 followers on social media. This is a big deal, but talking to ESPN plus wasn't my <laughs> God, what is happening? Now, th- this, this, this is a big deal for us because like they're making a large commitment to us and we're making a large commitment to them. And the thing about points bet, um, and we work with our chief commercial officer who we're going to have on the show, Nick Solsky, you're going to find out this guy is a real character, but in a good way, he, he, he he's like one of the first and like he, he, he understood who we are before I could even tell him. Uh, Cause he's, he's a, he's a Canadian guy. He's got his finger on the pulse and he truly understands like the power of community and sports fan lifestyle. And like, our conversations were all around that and how we can like support the community and entertain the community and invest in the community. And that's ultimately why we went with points bet because like, it, it's such a natural fit. Like he's there. We're, they're working on some funny stuff and the, the and, and in the name of partnership, like we get to work and, and, and work with them on that and bring it into our, our world. And so there is some funny stuff they've got on the go that's going to be fun and they're going to allow us access to and work with and contribute to. So um, sorry, I couldn't do the rant earlier, but uh, yeah, pay attention to points bet. Um, really good team. They really value, you know, us as a company, us as a fan base. Um, so, you know, they're, they're here, they're in it for the right reasons. So we're, we're going to be singing their praises, but it's for the right reasons. So, when they uh, when they're able to operate in Canada, we'll start you know getting a little bit more deep into the sports betting side of them. But uh, just just 
stay along nation. They're, 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 they're one of the good ones. So uh, we'll have some fun. Like you said, not operational in Canada yet in terms of laying down money, but that's because they're doing everything by the book, which shows once again, yeah. they're good people over at points bet. Yeah. I want to see the yeah. bump. I want to like, come on, let's bump this kid with Twitter account and make it, make it our mission. Our podcast well, t- mission. They started at 85. So we're making, we got, we're getting some traction. We can do better. We'll get there. Oh, a hundred percent. We'll get there. So we'll, we'll, uh, you know, today's a day to respect the day, but tomorrow we are going to be making some noise about this. Yes, sir. Um, all right. Before we wrap things up here, need to give some love to our friends at Twig and Berries as well. It's uh, the weather's starting to change a little bit. I look out, I see many different colors of leaves still on the trees, but that means fall is coming. Hit up Twig and Berries. They got some great hoodies, some great new jackets as well. Right when you go to twigandberries.ca, they got the new arrivals section in there. Go check it out. Bunch of really cool stuff. Pick out something you like, then use the promo code Nation15. Bang, you save 15%. There you go. Everybody wins. Why not? Twigandberries.ca. Everybody watched the um, season finale of Big Brother last night? I did. How, uh, you know what? I'm going to give myself some props because I nailed the fucking winner on the first time we talked about it. Really? You yeah, did, you play. did. You did. I didn't know he, that you did, but that's pretty fucking he, amazing. He played a good, clean, like, yeah. you know, like good, good, like relationship game, good strategic game, and was an absolute beast when he needed to be. Like, it was, uh, it was quite imp- impressive. And it's just, it was like, obviously, a route. Yeah, I've never smart seen, guy. I've never seen, um, um, Every single person vote for one one person to win the show before. It was yeah. unbelievable. He, it was just like what was what was blowing my mind though is the part where you know Aza and Big D were talking like, oh, if we win, you know, or if Aza's like, oh, if I win, I'll take Xavier to the final two with me. Like, why? Oh. Do you do you, do you not want to win this game? Like, there are people in this season that were so fucking bad at playing big brother. It was shocking because a guy like Xavier who was dominant in every facet, just, you could see it was like a men against boys there. Almost. My favorite part was at the very end where, where Derek F was giving his reasons for winning for why he should win. And he's like, (laughs) I was just sitting back laughing and getting all of you out. And you could see the jury just audibly laugh at how ridiculous that statement was. Derek F was oh, a yeah. fly on the wall. I don't think he yeah. had one thing to do with one person leaving. No. Other than, his, other than his other than his vote, which he couldn't even say properly. I gotta say that this yeah. season was so boring in the sense that the cookout was a master, like a master class in how a alliance should work. But because they were so good at it, it made for a boring season yeah. until it was them turning on each other. Yeah. I have a suggestion for how Big Brother should change going forward. Because I think the finales are getting stale. I just think they are. Like we've had back to back years now where it's a unanimous winner. And the year before that, it was six to three. I just think the finale night is a little bit too boring now. I think they should scrap the final two and have the jury vote on the final three on like a one, two, three scale. Like you cast a ballot, you do like this guy first or this person first, this person second, this person third. And it might add a little bit more intrigue to the final. If there's a vote for third, a vote for second and a vote for first, they all get different prize, like different prize money as well. I just think we're falling into a trend where people like, they're not dumb. They're not going to bring a, a person who's close and competing with them and like might be able to beat them to the final. I just think a good big brother player is always going to be like, yeah, I'm going to bring a floater. Cause I'm not risking my three quarters of a million dollars. Even the last year we had, that was a somewhat close vote, which was Jackson and Holly. They were a showman. So it was kind of like me. I, I think they should redo it, the finale. I thought it was so funny that that was Kylan's thing. He's like, I want to bring the best competitor, which was Xavier. He's like, I want to bring him to the final two. And then when the power flipped, Xavier's just like, no, nah, fuck that guy. <laughs> He's got to go. Yeah. It's just, that's how it's done. That's how you're it supposed to do it. It was perfect. Yeah. I think they need to bring in people that aren't super fans. They should, they should fill a house with people that don't know what show they're going on. Just well, that they think they're celebrity. Yeah. And celebrity is going to be terrible. It could be awful. I don't think I'm going to watch Celebrity at all. I'm not going to watch Celebrity. No. I actually think I'm out on next year on Big Brother US. Unless really? They make some kind of changes. Like I find the Canadian, I'm actually going to start watching the Canadian one. I've got all the all the episodes PVR'd. I just find it to be more interesting lately. 
The Canadian one's so much better than the U S one over the last like three, four years. Consistently Canada finds ways to keep it interesting. And I just find the house guests are a little bit more relatable and entertaining. It's just now it's big brothers. Now it's like a science. All these people study the game and they love it so much that they're like this and that if they just had a house filled with people that don't even know what show they're going on, they just know they're on a reality show. That'd be way more interesting to me or like throw a couple of, uh, you know, ex cons in the mix or something that are just like <laughs> something really spicy in there. Cause that's what it needs. Cause I just found this season to be incredibly boring because of how effective the cookout was. Yeah. But respect I, to the cookout. They did it. Like yeah, they, did. they did it. Well. One of the more, it's it, it it sure made the show a little boring, but like they pulled it was off a, master a class. pretty impressive, pretty impressive. Every year, feat. there's a group of six or seven or whatever that form an alliance, but they fracture because they're not all on the same page, or they oh. leak something, or whatever, Quickly. whatever. The cookout didn't have any of that. They put on an yeah. absolute master oh, class in running a in running a, an alliance. Um, there have been yep. three 100%. unanimous votes in the finale in Big Brother history, and two of them are the last two years, which I found interesting. Um, anyways. No Dr. Will on the finale either. No, I'm trying to think if they had it last year. I can't remember. Yeah, they did. And COVID, did. probably. Yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, all righty here. Let's, uh, we could probably wrap this up. Yeah, the Big Brother finale. Yeah. It was okay, but it was predictable. Um, Jay, you got your rental car. You all good? Yeah, I'm on a, uh, what we like to call in the relationship game, a relationship mitigation trip. Uh, it's been a very busy summer for me. It's about to be a very busy fall for me. Um, I went to the missus to uh, spend some quality time. So we're on Vancouver Island. I promised her only 90 minutes of work a day. I've already exceeded that <laughs> both days. Um, but there's a lot going on, but she is very patient, but I do it all in the morning. So we can enjoy ourselves in the day, uh, in the afternoon and day. So, uh, I just picked up the rental car. We are going to Eucalypt, uh, got a cool little, uh, place there and, uh, yeah, looking forward to kind of like decompressing and unwinding. Um, and I just realized I made the wrong turn and I have to circle back. Cause I just blew past the hotel. So, well, you enjoy uh, that yeah. and you, you enjoy your everyone. nice weekend. Um, <laughs> yeah. Chalmers, you enjoy your weekend. Yeah, you enjoy Sunday football as well. Mr. Bag milk. Yeah. It was a pleasure as always. And for everyone tuning in, this has been episode 317 brought to you by DoorDash, Twiggy Berries, and of course the HGA group as well. We'll talk to you on Monday. Thanks for listening to another episode of the real life podcast. Don't want to miss any of our nonsense. Hit the subscribe button and give us a follow on Twitter and Instagram.